Ladies and gentlemen, the podcast is back and we have got a lot of news to cover today, including news on modern warfare and how PlayStation is going to have a day one advantage and also news on a classic mode for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. We also have news on Google announcing a Stadia Premier Edition. And we have news on Mario Kart Tour and what its release date is going to be. Rockstar has its own PC game launcher and it's giving away a free game as a way of saying thank you. Pokemon Go news involves the Innova, Innova region going live in Pokemon Go. All this plus all the achievements for Borderlands 3 right here on the return of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fee. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Gen Z Retro here and welcome to the return! of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news rumors and of course, those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. Before we get into all of this, I just wanna say a few weeks ago, I managed to get to 100 subscribers on my channel and in order and in celebrating that, I did a mini stream of Forza Horizon 4 with the LEGO Speed Champions expansion. You can check that out on my channel. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be a great day. I've just finished recording the, my reaction to the 10 biggest victories for Ash Ketchum in the Pokemon series because he's finally done it after 22 years. He is finally a Pokemon League champion, if we don't include the Orange Island. This is his first major victory. Oh, wow. So, here we go. Let's get in to the news. But before that, I want to send out a big shout out, as always, to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, you get a 21-day free trial. There are no late fees. You can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. If you choose one of the priority packages, you'll be able to play the latest games on release day. Once you start renting, you're gonna start saving. I have been promoting Boomerang Rentals since I started the podcast last year. Had to hit the reset button and reboot the series. And here we are, I've, I've saved over a thousand pounds in rentals in in-game purchases since I started using the service. It's a fantastic service. It's one I highly recommend. It's boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. So let's get into the news now, shall we? We have got a big, we've got a big one to start with. It is uh, the industry having a problem with abuse, dealing with gaming's Me Too movement. Everything's got a Me Too movement at this point. The sub, the subheading says, Workplace harassment was high on the agenda at the Women in Games European Conference following a spate of allegations. So here we go, let's see what it says. Some say it is long overdue, some doubted victims would be ready to speak out, but now, hashtag Me Too has very much arrived in the video game industry. Last month, Game developer Natalie Lawhead posted to their website accusing video game soundtrack composer Jeremy Saul of... Okay, that's not what I was expecting. Uh, of raping them while the two worked together at an unnamed Vancouver-based development studio. 
Saul has denied the accusation. Within days, another developer, Zoe Quinn, alleged on Twitter to have suffered abuse and harassment from Alec Holo Holoka, creator of award-winning game Night in the Woods. Holoka was found dead days later after the allegations were made. These incidents, these instances were followed by further accounts of sexual harassment from other developers within the games industry. Some detailed extended periods of emotional manipulation and abuse by senior colleagues. The Time's Up campaign group that fights sexual harassment called the actions described within the post as disturbing and suggested these revelations ought to be a moment of reckoning for the industry. And this is what the tweet said from at Time's Up now. The stories we are hearing from women who work in video games are disturbing and unconsolable. This should be a moment of reckoning for the industry. This culture of sexual harassment, gaslighting and retaliation cannot go on any longer. Last week during the Women in Games European Conference hosted at the University of the Arts London, Marie Claire Eisenman, CEO of Women in Games, made the point of addressing the recent allegations in her keynote speech. In the last few weeks, sadly, we have expected a games. We have experienced a games Me Too mo moment. She told the 350 attendees, after GamerGate in 2014 and a lack of resolution up from that intensive moment, I sensed another wave would come. Senior women in the games industry took the opportunity afforded by the two-day conference to discuss workplace abuse and the wider issue of toxicity in gaming culture and to share positive examples of how to move forward. What emerged was recognition of the problem and determination not to allow gaming's Me Too moment to be just that, a moment. I believe everyone who has come forward so far, and I am generally inclined to believe anyone who has the courage to come forward and speak their truth about them being harassed or abused by those exploiting a power balance over them, said Jess Highland of Wonderstruck Games. I do think this industry has a problem with abuse, both sexual abuse and abusive working conditions. <clears throat> and I think it all stems from unhealthy and unaccountable power structures that give abusers so many chances to duck out of responsibility. Victims deserve better. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. This is actually quite a lengthy article. Now, my thoughts on this. When the, when the Me Too movement started and these allegations um, against Harvey Weinstein came to fruition, it, uh, it raised a few eyebrows, it rang a few alarm bells, and um, yeah, here we are. It's now in the video game industry. Do, you th do, we, th do we think this is going to be a sign of things to come, folks? Let me know in the comments below. We've got an article from PC Gamer now, and this player beat Minecraft without taking a single step. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. This player, right. Dozens of rowboats and one brave pig called Little Timmy are the main methods of transportation, but no walking. Oh, that's clever. It's awesome when players take on ridiculous self-imposed challenges, like like the time someone beat Skyrim using only a torch, or when another player beat Fallout New Vegas on maximum difficulty without dying or killing anyone. Ooh. The latest entry in the category I'll call They Really Should Be an Annual Award. <laughs> what? There should really... Proofread these articles, guys. There should really be an annual awards show for this kind of accomplishment in this Minecraft player. Is the, bleh, is the mine is this Minecraft player who beat the game without ever walking? No walking at all, with the exception of standing and hopping straight up. This player never used his legs. Technically, you don't really beat Minecraft because it's an endless game, but. You can beat it by visiting the end and defeating the Ender Dragon. 
And that's what YouTube at the height advantage did. Amazingly, without ever taking a single step. You can watch a fascinating and well edited video of this accomplishment. Um, I'll get a... Uh, it's, uh, it's entitled How to Beat Minecraft Without Walking. I'll, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below. So how do you beat Minecraft without actually walking? Well, with a lot of patience and creativity. He created a Minecraft world and then immediately unbound the walking keys standing in place. He began doing the usual Minecraft things, chopping trees, collecting resources and crafting items. He just did it he just did it all without walking around. Of course, you do actually need to move in Minecraft. So the height advantage crafted a boat. The boat is on land, one block away, but mounting the boat moves him over to it. Collecting, collect the boat, place it one block away, and mount it again. It's slow, but it does get you around. Ooh, that's clever. That's very clever. Eventually, he finds a water source and can start scooping, scooping it up and dumping it with a bucket to use the boat like an actual boat. More boats are later used to create long, mountable pathways over the land. And then, after much boat mounting, he saddled a pig named Little Timmy and rides him around. In a message on Reddit, the height advantage tells me he took him, it took him around 30 hours to complete a no-walking playthrough. But he eventually rode little Timmy into the end, leading him with a carrot on a stick. <laughs> Isn't that what you're supposed to do with donkeys? Anyway. And defeated the ender dragon. The brave pig, sadly, didn't survive. A moment of silence for little Timmy. I asked how he came up with the idea for such a challenging run. I originally thought the idea thought of the idea when I found a seed where you spawn in the mine shaft right next to a mine cart and wanted to do an entire playthrough without leaving the mine cart. He said, I had a few failed attempts and then came up with the boat idea to make things easier on myself. Plus, it would be it would then be impossible on any seed. At the end of the video the stats are shown which do show some distance travelled by normal movement, though he explains that colliding with mobs and entities that bump you around is registered by the stats page as walking. But as far as true leg locomotions go, the player never took a step. As for little Timmy, he carried his master over 45 kilometres. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Bay was one of my favourite films growing up. But, it, but this is another occasion of, I take my hat off to you, good sir. Fantastic. Right. So let's, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's clever. I, I like these fan challenges. Do you think I should try and do a fan challenge at some point? Pokemon Go's Anuva Stone, Mewtwo Raid, and Gen 5 are now live. So here we go. This is what we've got. Pokemon originally from the Unova region are now available in Pokemon Go. Here we go. Pokemon's third and final wave of Ultra Bonuses is now live. Not only does it give players around the world the chance to encounter legendary, the legendary Mewtwo in 5-star raids, it also includes the first appearance of Gen 5 Pokemon, and developer Niantic has shared more details on which monsters can now be found in the game. As the studio have previously teased, the three starters from Pokemon Black and White, Snivy, Tepig and Osh Oshawott, will appear in the wild, as will a few other Gen 5 Pokemon like Patrat, Lillipup, Purloin, Pidove and Blitzel. Other Unova native monsters such as Drillbur, Fungus, Litwick, and Ferroseed will also hatch from certain types of eggs. And while the and while the while the gear Pokemon Click Clink will while the gear Pokemon Clink will appear in raid battles. 
So this is what's in store. We have, so this is what we've got in store. From the two kilometer eggs, we've got Patrat, Lillipup, Purloin, Pidove. The five kilometer eggs, you've got the Starters, Snivy, Tepig, Oshawott, Blitzel, Drillba, and Fungus. The 10k eggs are Ferrisseed, Clink, Lit Litwick, Golet, and Dieno. And, and Dano, that's how you pronounce it. And Clink is also available in raid battles, like I said. Now, what level that raid battle is going to be remains to be seen. The first wave of Gen 5 Pokemon also includes a handful of new regional exclusive monsters. Players in the Western Hemisphere will be able to encounter Heatmore, while those in the Eastern Hemisphere can catch Durant. The three elemental monkeys... The three... Wait, hang on a second. The three elemental monkey Pokemon, Pan Sage, Pan Seer, and Pan Poor, will also appear in certain parts of the world. Pan Sage will be exclusive to the Asia Pacific region. Pan Seer will... Pan Seer will appear throughout Europe and the Middle East, Africa, and India. And Pan Poor will only be found in the Americas and Greenland. A running, a running gag in... Um, when I was playing uh, Kingdom Hearts, um, as, as soon as I saw monkeys, I was just, I was just like, wait, wait a minute, what is this? Evil monkeys, die, evil monkeys! <laughs> and I did encounter the evil monkeys in uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts three, the Anuva Stone as well. Now here we go. To coincide with Gen five Pokemon, Niantic is introducing the, a new evolutionary item to go called the Unova Stone. Much like the Sinnoh Stone, this can be used to evolve certain Gen 5 Pokemon, such as Lampent, such as Lampent. Niantic says you'll be able to obtain the Unova Stones through research breakthroughs. Same way you can get the, the Sinnoh Stones. And Mewtwo Raids, here we go. As previously mentioned, the legendary Mewtwo has also returned as part of the third wave of Ultra Bonuses. Players will have another chance to encounter the legendary psychic Pokemon in 5-star raids until September 23rd. This time, it will know the psychic type attack, Psy Strike, which was originally introduced to the series in Pokemon Black and White. That's clever, but that's not all. If you're lucky, you may encounter a shiny Mewtwo. Ooh, Interesting. Next up, we've got news. We've got good news for uh, Rockstar fans. Rockstar gives away a free game as it releases its own PC game launcher. Grab GTA San Andreas when you download Rockstar's PC launcher. Excellent. Once this decides to load, can you load any slower? Oh, Winnie. Thank you. There we go. The world of PC gaming has gotten a bit more crowded. Publisher Rockstar has announced a new PC launcher, and downloading it nets you a free copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. The Rockstar Games launcher is a one-stop shop for everything Rockstar Games, from launching titles like L.A. Noire and Max Payne 3, to purchasing, to purchasing shark cards, Grand Theft Auto V's premium in-game currency. Rockstar's new PC launcher will feature cloud saves, automatic game updates, support for disc-based and digital games, even if they're bought from an another storefront, and more. San Andreas is offered for free for a limited time when you download the launcher, which is free to do as well. It's unclear how this launcher will impact Rockstar's games on Steam. Rockstar isn't the only video game publisher to dive into the PC launcher scene. Fortnite publisher Epic Games introduced the Epic Games Store in December 2018 and has quickly garnered both praise from developers regarding Epic's generous revenue split and complaints from complaints from some gamers over Epic acquiring exclusives like exclusives like Metro Exodus and Untitled Goose Game. The company was accused of tax evasion earlier this summer, according to a report investigated by think tank 
Tax Watch UK. The whole, Ro the whole of Rockstar paid zero corporation tax in the UK from 2019 to 2009 to 2018, despite Grand Theft Auto V reaching an estimated 6 billion US dollars in its lifetime. The game came out six years ago. And people are still playing it. Right now, I'd rather play Grand Theft Auto V than Red Dead Redemption 2. There. I said it. So, we've got some news on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yes, they are rebooting Modern Warfare. Why this is happening, I don't know. And to be honest, I really don't care. But since this is the conceit of the show, I have an obligation to report on this. So... Let's see what, let's see what Activision's done. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. <laughs> oh, how I've missed that little jingle. It is, of course, the hey, gaming. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Hello. Son of a... Yeah. What is up? Uh, I'm Ben, this is Persia, and we're here playing the Call of Duty 2v2 gunfight... Ow! Got a reload. Oh, for Pete's sake. Actual request for a Good copy. UAV beginning. Oh. Go away. Not interested. Again, go away. Not interested. Thank you. Right. Right, here we go. PS4 players will have a day one advantage. Ah, great. Although most of Call of Duty Modern Warfare's post-release DLC will launch on all platforms at the same time, Sony's exclusivity deal with Activision is continuing in some form. Activision has confirmed that PS4 players will ha have an exciting day one advantage in Modern Warfare. That's all Activision had to say on the matter, so fans can only guess for now what that might mean. More details will be announced soon, Activision said. Activision and Sony had an exclusivity deal for Call of Duty for years now, with new content releasing first on PlayStation. That's changing somewhat this year, as most of the, the game's after-launch content will be available on all systems simultaneously as part of developer Infinity Ward's intention to keep player ba the ba player base connected. Especially, this is especially important now, apparently, because Modern Warfare supports cross-play between consoles and PC. This is act Here is Activision's full statement on its partnership with Sony for Call of Duty content. Call of Duty is excited to continue its partnership with PlayStation, including last weekend's PS4 debut of the Modern Warfare Open Beta, as well as the recent PS4 exclusive 2v2 Alpha. But the best is yet to come. For the very first time in our partnership with PlayStation, PS4 players will have an exciting day one advantage. More details on how Call of Duty will continue to support PlayStation as the best place to play Modern Warfare will be rolled out soon. Activision will test the cross-play functionality with the next Modern Warfare beta that begins this weekend. Modern Warfare launches on October 25th on for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Nobody cares! Nobody cares! Because Call of Duty There, I said it. Call of Duty should no longer exist. No more Call of Duty games. Make something that isn't Call of Duty, Activision. I've missed ranting on. I've missed ranting on there. Publishers that don't care about anything but money. Hello, I like money. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Now. The next article here, it is fans predicting Last of Us 2 multiplayer beta is coming. 
as more details surface around PlayStation's upcoming gameplay event. Diff different experiences for Last of Us 2 will be playable at Madrid Games Week next month, one week after its big media event. Very interesting. Who would have known? Right. In anticipation of its big media event next week, more details are surfacing about The Last of Us 2 that are getting PlayStation fans particularly giddy over the possibilities of finally seeing more from Naughty Dog's most an much anticipated sequel. For one thing, we know that the press at the event on September 24th in Los Angeles will be getting around three hours of hands-on hands -on time with The Last of Us 2, suggesting the game is in a healthy state and close to the end of its development. Ooh, excellent. In addition, Sony has confirmed that the game will be present and playable at the PlayStation booth during Madrid Games Week in Spain from October 3rd to October 6th, with different experiences available for both The Last of Us 2 and Death Stranding during the fan-focused expo next month. Given the extent of gameplay time that press are given next week, in addition to this Madrid Games Week reveal, fans are already predicting that The Last of Us 2's confirmed multiplayer mode will be a big part of this public publicity tour, as Naughty Dog has already confirmed the original game's factions PvP mode will be returning for this sequel. Some are even anticipating the announcement of a public beta on PlayStation 4. An industry insider has also teased that on top of all this, another PlayStation event is happening this month, presumably not long after The Last of Us 2's own showcase in LA, adding further momentum to the whirlwind of PlayStation 5 rumors still doing the rounds. In short, PlayStation fans ought to keep their eyes and ears firmly to the ground, aka their internet browser, for the next three weeks or so. Now, I finally managed to get round to playing the first Last of Us game. Um, last year. And, oh my word, I was not emotionally prepared. Such a great game. Can't wait for the sequel. I'm so glad I'm keeping my PlayStation. Which begs the question, what's going to happen as far as the PlayStation 5 is concerned? Anyway. Here we go. Mario Kart Tour release date, price, and trailer. We finally have details on Mario Kart Tour. What's gonna happen here? Here we go. Nintendo's smartphone games shrink down their source experience to enjoy on the go. And the next big one is big. Mario Kart Tour. This will be the third mobile Mario game following Super Mario Run and Dr. Mario World. But of course, the go-karts and tracks but of course, on the go carts and tracks beloved by gamers for decades. Please have Rainbow Road! Mario Kart 2 will be released on iOS and Android on September 25th. A week today! Woohoo! Which is a mere week away. And will be free to play. The game has been in closed beta for Android in certain countries, and so far it looks to bring a faithful, though vertically aligned, Mario Kart experience. Though there seems to be a lot of in-game currencies and microtransactions you'll have to deal with to get all your favourite characters. Following the failure of Miitomo, Mario Kart 2 is a good sign that, Mario, that Nintendo is going to be investing in mobile adaptations of its most popular IPs rather than trying anything more weird or new anytime soon. If you're a Nintendo fan, it's time to catch up on Nintendo Switch Lite. Let's cut to the chase. What is it? Mario Kart or Mobile? When can I play it? September 25th. What can I play it on? iOS and Android phones. September 25th. So, yeah, there you go. So, there we go. Will Mario Kart Tour make it into my top 10 games of 2019? We'll need to wait and see.
Next up, Google announces Stadia Premier Edition as Stadia Founders Edition almost sells out. Okay. And this one's on this one's from IGN. So here we go. Google has announced a new Stadia bundle now available at the G Store and will replace the previously announced and available Google Stadia Founders Edition. Google confirmed to IGN that as of today, September 18th, this article was just earlier today. What about exactly? Literally two hours ago at time of recording. The Stadia Founders Edition, which included the exclusive Knight Blue Stadia controller, is now largely sold out. It is available in very limited supply in US and Canada, as well as the UK, but, otherwise, but is otherwise completely sold out in Europe. Instead, what will be available to those looking to purchase this, a Stadia bundle ahead of the game streaming platform's launch later this year is the Premier Edition, which will also cost $129, as the Founders Edition did. Okay, what do you get for that? The Google Stadia's pre Premier Edition is nearly identical to the Founders Edition, except for a couple of notable exceptions. The Premier Edition will include Chromecast Ultra, 3-month Stadia Pro subscription, and a Stadia Clearly White controller. Stadia Premier and Founders Edition's differences. Okay, so here we go. The Founders Edition and Premier Edition, while sharing the same price point and largely the same features, come with a couple of differences. The Founders Edition comes with the exclusive Night Blue controller, while the Premier Edition comes with the Clearly White controller. Meanwhile, the Founders Edition also includes a Buddy Pass which allows Stadia founders, buyers to share three months of Stadia Pro, Google's subscription program for Stadia, with a friend. Additionally, Founders Edition buyers have access to specialty Stadia usernames, while Premier Edition buyers will have access to the same username formatting all Stadia members going forward will be able to choose. Google most recently showcased Stadia as part of Gamescom 2019, confirming Cyberpunk 2077 will, com will come to Google Stadia, while eight other games were announced for Stadia as well during Gamescom. You can check out the full list of announced and confirmed games publishers and developers set to support Stadia. Now, let's have a look at this. So here we go. Let's see what we can you load any slower. So here we go, list of confirmed Google Stadia games. Once it stops loading, thank you. Google, stop loading anything else from the website. I clearly said stop. Anyway, so here we go. Thank you. Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Baldur's Gate 3, Borderlands 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Darksiders Genesis, Destroy All Humans, Destiny 2, Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, Dragon Ball Z Universe 2, Farming Simulator 19, Final Fantasy 15, Football Manager, Get Packed, Grid, Guilt, Possibly Timed Exclusive, Just Dance, Kin, uh, K-I-N-E, uh, Metro Exodus, Mortal Kombat, 11, NBA 2K, Orcs Must Die 3, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, Rage 2, Samurai Showdown, Super Hot, Elder Scrolls Online, Thumper, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, 
Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breaking Point, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, Trials Rising, The Crew 2, Watch Dogs Legion, Wolfenstein Youngblood, and Windjammers 2. The beautiful irony of all this, the beautiful irony of all those games, is the fact that Google and Google are stamping down on the amount of uh, violent content that can be monetized on YouTube, and yet they are being hypocrites, as far as I'm concerned, when you've got a lot of violent games on there like Borderlands 3 uh, and Mortal Kombat, and then you've got games like Tomb Raider, C Cyberpunk, which is yet to come out, that's going to be action-packed. They're only shooting themselves in the foot here. Next. A last article of the day is, of course, Final Fantasy VII Remake's classic mode. It's a nod to the past, but won't satisfy purists. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Now, let's have a look. Since Final Fantasy VII Remake's big gameplay reveal at E3 this year, Fans have begun to rally into two broad camps. Those who dig its new action-led combat system and those who really wish Square Enix had stuck to the turn-based design of the original game. In what could be seen as an attempt to satisfy the latter camp, Square Enix has announced a new classic battle mode. Yet, what the studio has revealed is more likely to satisfy those already sold on the new vision for Final Fantasy VII rather than those who oppose it. The issue is a simple one. Classic mode is not a turn-based combat system. It is still Final Fantasy VII Remake's new real-time combat. But it has been tweaked just enough to provide an illusion of individual turns. In the original Final Fantasy VII, a character's active time battle gauge increases over time, during which they can do nothing but stand still while the gauge is filled. Players can command that character to take their turn, and the process starts again. In the Final Fantasy VII Remake, the ABT counter is filled by executing basic attacks in real time, meaning that there is no downtime between actions. Classic Mode changes this by taking control of characters for the action-heavy portion of a combat encounter. Attacking, blocking, evading, and moving is all done by the AI, which effectively means the game fills the ABT gauge for you. When the gauge is full, you can then pause the game to open the command menu and assign orders for characters to use special attacks, magic spells, or items. This altered approach is a lovely, loving nod to Final Fantasy VII's past. Classic mode allowed, allows battles to look as breathtakingly cinematic as they do in standard mode, but the player work is the player works as a backline team tactician rather than directly controlling Cloud and the gang. That's truer to the mechanics of the original game and helps emulate the pace of that experience. But it's also very obviously not a completely faithful replication of the ABT ATB system. Hmm. Well, my suggestion is if you want to be satisfied, play the original. If you want to have the proper AB, ATB uh, gauge, if you want to have that, play the original. Anyway, that's all the... Um, Have I really only been recording for 40 minutes? No, I thought I was I thought I was I thought I was recording for longer. Yeah. That's a, that's a shame. I was hoping this was gonna be longer, but Yeah, I have only been recording for about just over half an hour. Anyway. That's, uh, that's this week. That's the news out of the way. Now it's time to get on to uh, the part of the show that I, have that I have very badly missed. We have got 45 achievements here, all adding up to 1,000 Gamer Score! And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! 
Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Points and trophies are back, and it is Borderlands 3, one of this year's most anticipated releases. It's, um, people have been waiting for Borderlands 3 for a while, and, uh, I should, I should really get, I should really get going and play the rest of the Borderlands games to get myself ready for Borderlands 3. Hopefully I can get that done before the end of the year. But anyway, here we go. The achievements are as follows. You got skills, reach level 2, 5 gamer score. Starbound, reach level 10, 10 gamer score. Vaulting your way to the top, reach level 25, 10 gamer score. Barreled right over them. Kill an enemy with an exploding barrel, 15 gamer score. Dropping loads, win a live grenade at a, sl at a slot machine, 15 gamer score. Feeling a little stabby, kill an enemy, knifing them with a gun blade, 15 gamer score. Gun pals, send an item to a friend, 15 gamer score. I hope you didn't teabag, win a duel, 15 gamer score. On fleek, equip purple rated gear or better in every slot, 15 gamer score. Reward cards, earn a loyalty package for, from each weapon manufacturer, 15 gamer score. Stay away from the light, revive another player, 15 gamer score. Stick it to them. Kill two or more enemies with a single sticky grenade, 15 gamer score. Tips appreciated, tip moxie. 15 gamer score. A la carte. Complete 20 side missions. 20 gamer score. Good against remotes is one thing. Get a perfect score at the firing range on any difficulty. 20 gamer score. Got big game. Defeat all Hammerlock's legendary hunts. 20 gamer score. My name is Earl. Buy 20 cosmetic items from Crazy Earl. 20 gamer score. Slaughterhouse 3. Complete all the circles of slaughter. 20 gamer score. Twil Tales from the Iridian slab. Decipher all of the Iridian slabs. 20 gamer score. Zeroed in with a zero. Defeat all zeros with a zero. Targets of opportunity. 20 gamer score. 100 proof. Clear all Iridian proof. Clear all the Iridian proving grounds. 30 gamer score. 100 names for sand. Discover all named locations on Pandora. 30 gamer score. Biggest badass in the Borderlands. Reach level 50. 30 gamer score. Boltons. Unlock 10 character heads or skins. 30 gamer score. City Slicker. Discover all named locations on Promethea. 30 gamer score. Mechanical. Mechanical. Unlock 10 vehicle parts via hijacking. 30 gamer score. Swamped. Discover all named locations on Eden 6. 30 gamer score. Getting a little on the side. Complete all side missions. 50 gamer score. Master of all you survey. 50 gamer score. And now we've got secret achievements. Uh, they are just story based. Right, you've got you've got Apocalypso. Complete a mission. The Great Vault. Cross the streamers. Complete Blood Drive. Florida Man. Down yourself by grenade or explosion. Gone from my sight, complete mission beneath the meridian. Heir to an empty castle, complete mission called as the grave. I am a goddess, a glorious female warrior. Complete the mission in the shadow of starlight. I mustache you a question. Complete mission Atlas at last. Nog it off, complete mission hostile takeover. So long Pandora, complete mission taking, taking flight. That was called complete mission lair of the harpy. Welcome to the Crimson Raiders, complete mission, Children of the Vault, stay golden, use a golden key. Exo Archeolo, you, you get the gist. Discover all named locations on Necrotafio. Bye Felicia, complete mission, Divine Retribution. Damn Gina, damn Gina, get all vault rewards. And, and they are worth 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, right, hang on a second, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 15, 30, 50, and 50 gamer score respectively, get all of those, and then you unlock the last achievement, which is Ultimate Vault Hunter, unlock all Borderlands 3 achievements, 120 gamer score. And that all combines to give you 
1,000 Gamer Score! Yep. And there we go. That is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed the return of the Trophy Achieving Podcast. Uh, if you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I've got my previous video on the left, which is my top 10 biggest victories uh, for Ash Ketchum in the Pokemon series reaction on the left and the Trophy Achievement Podcast playlist on the right. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing over the course of the weekend, but I'll get something sorted. But until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.